Welcome back to my channel. So drum roll, I have officially passed my line check, which means I am officially back on the line as a first officer on the Dash 8, the Q400. I passed my line check as of August 1st. Thank you so much for all the kind words and the encouragement and all the support I've received. It's, um, it feels nice to be back. So for today's video, I was starting to get a lot of questions as to what it's like to be back being an airline pilot or just being a pilot it once again and I figured this would actually be a perfect topic for a video since this is something I've received through my YouTube and Instagram comments over the last few years so I put together a top 10 list of things that I wish that I'd known before becoming a pilot some of it applies to being an airline pilot specifically and others are just overall things that I wish I'd known before becoming a pilot so these are not necessarily negative things it's just things that I myself have gone through you know learning learning this through trial and error and not necessarily having someone teaching me this before getting into this industry. So I wanted to make this top 10 list to better educate you so you can make the best decision for yourself and for your career. All right, so before we continue in today's video, I just wanted to share a quick word from today's sponsor. So as you all know, I am a big fan of Skillshare, but in case you didn't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. For this month, I decided to do a course on stoicism. So the course that I chose is called How to Be Happier, Stoicism masterclass and it's done by Sam and Ali. I really enjoy the class as I've been wanting to work a little bit more on my mindset and my perspective on on things so this was a great introduction to stoicism and its benefits. The first 1,000 of my amazing subscribers that click on the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you so much once again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and now Let's get back to my top 10 things. So the number one thing out of my top 10 list of things that I wish that I'd known before becoming a pilot is how long this path truly takes. I think a lot of us are told this when we are student pilots, but depending on where you want to take this career and depending if you wanted to do this as a full-time career, it is a really, really long path to get to where you may want to get to. And one of my very early instructors had told me something that I still remember to this day, which is to not rush to that finish line. And the reason why he mentioned this is because you really have to see each section or each chapter of your sort of book as its own separate entity and so you have to really try to enjoy every step of the way because too often we see and hear pilots who are just rushing to become captains on a 777 and then they forget to enjoy every other step of the way so during their flight training while they're in instructors perhaps while they're at the regional airline so just trying to make the best of it every step of the way and enjoy the entire process because it'll be over before you realize it number two thing I wish that I had truly known before becoming a pilot is the cost. Now, this is something that a lot of people understand and a lot of people have heard, but when you actually start to crunch the numbers and take a look at how expensive this industry is to get into, it is something that you really have to take into consideration. And one of the reasons why you do need to seriously consider how expensive this will be is because of the entry level positions that you may start or get into after you spent all this money on flight training. Unfortunately, especially in Canada, the entry level jobs are very low paying jobs. You will not necessarily be able to pay it off right away. You have to be okay with this. Now, for many doctors, for many professionals, this is a known thing. Unfortunately, with aviation, it seems like there's a big difference with the entry level income. So don't necessarily expect to get into this industry to be able to make a lot 
lot of money. It takes a very long time, especially in Canada, before you're able to make a lot of money from this career. Make sure that you get into this industry because you have the passion for flying. Otherwise, it's a really long haul and it's a very long struggle to be able to pay off your debt and make it all worth it if you're unhappy with what you're doing in the first place. Number three thing that I wish that I'd known before becoming a pilot is that this might be a lonely path. It might be a lonely career to get into. And this is a good thing or a bad thing, depending on the type of person that you may be. So for someone like myself, I'm okay being on my own. I'm okay doing things quite independently. So this wasn't necessarily something that I regretted, but for some individuals who don't really like to be on their own, this might be challenging. If you don't necessarily have a mentor or you don't have anybody else in your family or an older sibling perhaps who's gone through this, you might be the only one forging ahead and creating this path for yourself. And that can really be isolating at times. So again, if you struggle with being on your own or you don't really have that initiative to start things independently, this might be challenging because a lot of times you have to rely solely on yourself to study, to get, be disciplined, to take your written exams, etc. So being independent and being perhaps lonely in this career will sort of go hand in hand. And again, it could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on the type of person that you are. So number four thing that I wish that I had known before becoming a pilot, and this might be one of my top ones personally, is how challenging it might be to stay fit or to make health a priority. Now I should state that it is absolutely possible to make health a priority. I work at a regional airline where we don't get meals provided for us. We get a per diem amount, which is a, a small daily amount to help pay for those uh, meals. But I like to instead invest it elsewhere. And I prefer to just cook for myself ahead of time so that I can just choose a little bit healthier options and save a little bit of money. So doing your meal prepping, looking ahead at where you want to work out or what gyms have perhaps has the equipment that you are wanting to use, where you can go for running paths. It is all absolutely doable. I've been able to maintain a somewhat healthy lifestyle flying for an airline. It just has to be a priority. And again, knowing this ahead of time will really make a big difference. Even if it feels like you need to be studying for eight hours straight, you're going to be so much better off if you just take a 30 minute break to go and work out, go and lift some weights, get your mind off things. It'll really, really benefit you for sleeping as well. So this is something that I really want people to understand and take seriously because our medicals rely on us being healthy. Another thing to consider as well is the long haul aspect or how your circadian rhythm gets affected by constantly having shifting time zones. So dealing with jet lag, this is not something that I deal with specifically as a regional pilot, but it could be something that I deal with in the future and dealing with a lot longer haul flights but it's absolutely manageable if you prioritize your sleep, if you drink a lot of water and you get some healthy snacks for you while you're in the flight deck, it's all really possible. It just takes a little bit of extra discipline. All right, moving on to the number five thing that I wish that I'd known before becoming a pilot is how many days away from my home I was going to be once I became an airline pilot. Now, this is very specific to the type of perhaps longer term flying that you're looking to do. So what I mean by that is when I was a flight instructor, I was home every single night. So that may, may work really well for someone who is more of a homebody. Now that I work as a regional pilot, I am gone now that I'm back, of course, I am gone between 14 to sometimes 16 days out of the month. And for some people, this is extremely challenging. It might be challenging if you just like to be home more often. It might be challenging if you're a parent or if you're wanting to have children in the future. So some people love this, others hate this. They might choose to fly a corporate gig where they are more on call, but they get to be at home. So again, it's just about finding the lifestyle that works for you, but it's definitely something to keep in mind when you're getting into this industry. All right, moving on to number six thing I wish that I knew before becoming a pilot, and this is flight tests or getting examined. You will absolutely have to get comfortable with this if you're wanting to become a pilot. Now, I will preface this by saying that most of us in this industry have some sort of flight test anxiety or 
sim anxiety. And that is totally normal. That is totally acceptable. But those who do not end up succeeding are the ones that don't end up thriving off being in high pressure environments. That goes from all the way back to your first private pilot written exam and all the way through the rest of your career. If you do want to make it to the airlines or where you're holding a type rating, you will need to be recertified at around every six months or every year for the rest of your career until you retire. So again, really needing to be comfortable and it does get better. I promise it does get better, but really needing to be comfortable with dealing with flight tests and dealing with those nerves and finding a way to manage those stress levels, manage that anxiety so that you can keep performing and excelling under those high pressure situations. All right. Number seven thing I wish that I'd known before becoming a pilot is that it can be extremely rewarding. This industry is a fantastic industry for those who are constantly trying to learn. They're constantly trying to progress and set personal goals or reach certain milestones for themselves because there is always an opportunity for you to progress and to keep learning. So as an example, when I became a flight instructor, I was able to see the personal satisfaction and how rewarding it is to be teaching another person and seeing them excel. Same goes for becoming a captain. I know that once I had achieved that my captaincy at my airline and I had achieved that huge, huge milestone, it was obviously extremely rewarding. And there's always opportunities for you to keep learning. I just find that this career obviously keeps me very mentally stimulated and there's always an opportunity to expand and learn from others who have been in the industry longer than you to take on their, their wisdom and to be able to share it on to other people like you. So I find that this career can be extremely rewarding for that. Number eight thing that I wish that I had known before becoming a pilot is you will wear a uniform. And I know that might seem obvious for many of you, but the reality is you will probably always be wearing a uniform in almost all environments. Once you move on to an airline, you work as a corporate pilot, or even if you're doing medevac, you're dealing with a flight suit. So this can be an awesome thing and it could be a terrible thing. It's awesome when you're extremely tired and you're on minimum rest and you're waking up at three in the morning and I I don't have to think about anything that I'm wearing that day. I just put on the uniform and go. And it can be a little bit more irritating when you're sweating, you're really uncomfortable and you're in material that's not really stretchy or maybe doesn't really fit you as well. So again, it can be a good and a bad thing. Uniform, you're gonna have to wear it. So get used to it. The number nine thing, number nine thing I wish that I known before becoming a pilot and specifically an airline pilot is your schedule. So I touched on this a little bit earlier when I was talking about your work life balance, but more specifically your schedule and how that impacts your day to day life. And the biggest way that I saw this impacted is how you sort of arrange or coordinate your life outside of work. Now, remember that doctor's appointment that you're wanting to book about three months ahead of time. You can do that, but you have no idea if you're going to be able to attend it until the month prior. So most of us who are in the airline world will be receiving our schedules between say like the 20th of the month up to the 26th of the month prior. So it can be really, really challenging for you to plan around certain things. I can't tell you the amount of weddings and anniversaries that I've missed because I just can't work around it with my schedule. So depending on the airline or the company that you work with, they may have a system where the seniority impacts your schedule. So for someone like my myself, who is quite junior in the company. So I haven't been at the company very long. I may get a worse schedule than someone who has been at the company who is way further ahead of me in the seniority. I'm lucky that my company has a socialized bidding. So all of us generally get a similar bidding or a similar schedule, but other companies have seniority based bidding. So it's very likely that if you're a very junior first officer, you will not get Christmas off or you will not get holidays off and you sort of have to 
assume that for the first few years of your career with the specific company that you're with, you will not necessarily have those days off. And again, for some people this works and for others, it's something that's really frustrating. I'm personally quite okay with having a different schedule every single month. I personally kind of like bidding so that I can have days off when other people aren't off. So I like having, you know, random Thursdays off or Mondays off, but others really dislike this because they may have a partner who they want to spend more time with, say specifically on the weekend or specifically with certain days that they might have off. As another example, if say you're working as an on-call pilot, so where you are having certain shifts where you're not necessarily flying, but you are on a call out system. So you might have to report and go to the airport and go work within two hours of your company's dispatch calling you. I personally, absolutely dislike being on reserve and being on call. So this is something that I try to avoid 100% of the time, but if you're okay being that flexible, then that might work for you. So again, just different things to consider with your schedule specifically. All right, last but not least, the number 10 thing that I wish that I knew before becoming an airline pilot is the flight benefits. So personally, this is my favorite thing about working for an airline. So depending on on the company that you may end up working with, you will get certain perks or flight benefits that you are able to use as a pilot. These are heavily discounted tickets for our contributions, for us working for the company where we share with other airline companies a reciprocal travel agreement. So we're able to use other airlines and be able to kind of move and get yourself around. So if this is something that really interests you, something to consider that I didn't and I didn't know at the time might be the company that you end up working for and which travel agreements or which benefits they have with other companies. So if that's something that interests you and you really want to be able to travel for cheap, keep in mind, this is always on standby. So no flights are guaranteed, but if you want to be able to have access to that cheaper travel, then this is something that you might want to look into. There are a lot of restrictions with this, so I'm not going to go into the details of course with this, but for myself, this is one of my most favorite things that I get to have and experience as a pilot is being able to travel and be able to see the world on standby, but of course for a lot cheaper. And it's just a little perk that we get for becoming pilots and putting all this hard work and all this effort um, into our careers. So as I was filming this video, I came up with just one extra bonus thing that I wish that I had known before becoming a pilot. The views are just so worth it. Now, I know that if you've taken a little introductory flight or you've done a familiarization flight and you started your flight training, you already know the views are pretty dang amazing. Some of my fondest memories and some of the things that have been so incredibly beautiful that I can't really share with you because it just, there's no way for me to be able to share the beauty of we, what we experienced. But one of those things has been to see the Northern Lights, so the Aurora from the flight deck and seeing that just cruising at 25,000 feet and seeing the Northern Lights just light up the flight deck, seeing that from above is just absolutely incredible. Seeing the different incredible sunrises over the Rocky Mountains or seeing the sunsets over the as well has just been so incredibly beautiful and just makes me appreciate our planet so much. Just remember that if you're studying away and you're grinding it out and you're having a hard time, just know that the views are absolutely worth it. All right, so that is it for today's video. I hope you liked my top 10 things that I wish that I had known before becoming a pilot. If you're a pilot or if you're a student pilot yourself, please let me know in the comments if there's something that I've missed or if there's something that you wish that you would have known before you got into this industry. I'd love to hear. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this helped you a little bit as to whether or not you want to consider this industry, whether you want to consider this career. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.